What do you think about them live lessons? I'll just show them money and give us the drugs. I love them. <laughs> Alrighty, first things first, get some tools and start taking some shit off. Alright, we got our intake, we took it off. As you can see, this turbo, it's quite beefy. It's got some beef to it. We're going to be taking some measurements and comparing it to the turbo that I'm putting on, which is a Borg Werner K31 turbo. Here's the tag, K31. Just roll it over so you can get a good idea of what it looks like and how big the exhaust housing is compared to the uh, intake side. Here's the turbine on the exhaust side and here's the turbine on the intake side. It's gonna be dark soon. I just want to point out before I did start this project, I got, bas I got backup gaskets, I got replacement studs, after you get your intake and exhaust clamps off, sometimes the clamps will be stuck to the metal, so just take a big screwdriver and pry up um, on various sides of the clamp and it should come right off. The next thing I'm gonna do is take the lower hose off, turbo return line hose, and here's the oil pressure hose that feeds the turbo. I'm going to take this nut off and I'm going to remove this brass fitting before I unbolt this turbo from the manifold and I'll plug that with some tissue. Now I did have trouble getting these 18 millimeter nuts off here with the wrench. So I have a Milwaukee impact gun here and they're coming right off. It's it's on the middle setting and uh, that's about it. I got the turbo off. Three of the studs came out with the nuts on them and this last stud I was a little worried. I thought this stud might be stuck, but it is coming off, and uh, that's about it. I will replace the studs, torque them in, and the next thing I gotta do is this has to go back about a half inch. This is a flex pipe here, and it's stretched out, pulled towards me. I'm putting the new studs in. I have anti-seize on the stud threads and as you can see right here I have two nuts on the end and I'm going to crank this on. something out here before you go trying to fit turbos onto these studs make sure you measure from the center of this stud to where the end of the turbo will sit in this exhaust flange one last thing before you're about to put your turbo in make sure your oil return line make sure you clean the gasket off it because once you get that turbo in there, you might have a hard time getting to this pipe to clean the surface off. So I took a razor blade, I, I scraped the old gasket off, and it feels good. There's no ridges, nothing feels sharp on it. It feels nice and smooth. So this turbo is ready to go in. So before I put this turbo on, I wanna make sure the exhaust side and the intake side match up with the turbo I'm taking off. Okay, I had to adjust it. The K31 has these uh, bolts right here. There's like six or seven of them going around. You got to loosen them very slightly and carefully rotate this to line it up where you want it and then retighten them. So just trying to match it up with the turbo that came off. You can see, looks pretty good. And this turbo is ready to go in. All right, the turbo's in. We got our manifold studs bolted up. Hey guys, I want to point out a couple things real quick. When you put the turbo back on, make sure the oil return 
line is fully bolted down and snug with um, medium or high strength thread lock on the bolts. If you use high strength thread lock, there's no reason to over torque it. Uh, make sure your brass fitting at the top has uh, thread lock sealant on it, uh, rated for high temperature. You can use the regular stuff that's not ready for high temperature. It still works, but the high temp stuff is better. Uh, do not over torque this nut here, because if you do, you'll snap the brass fitting off on the bottom. Make sure your exhaust clamp is fully snug. And you might have to recheck the torque on it after the pipe gets hot. After installing this turbo, I noticed there was a small rip on the line here. If that went unnoticed, the uh, boost pressure could have went too high and it could have uh, damaged the engine. So you absolutely want to make sure you have no leaks in your line here for the boost control. So most of you might know how this works. If some, if some of you don't, the boost pressure on the intake side going into the uh, intercooler uh, will open up the wastegate and that will reduce... Uh, the boost pressure so and it will cool off the exhaust gases so if this is stuck closed when you're climbing a hill with heavy load your exhaust gases will uh, get very hot and it can make the engine um, the EGT is very high which is unsafe for the engine and you and another thing yeah my experience with the 171702 turbo is uh, it is a great turbo it's fun to drive around I had it at 600 horsepower but I was sucking down fuel because I was flying up hills so probably don't want to do that uh, I just wanted to downgrade to 550 horsepower and I realized after I did that it just lacked low end so I wanted to put in the k31 to see what would happen uh, what I noticed is at idle it's more quiet because the wastegate is closed and the exhaust turbine is smaller um, the 171702 Turbo does have more top end, and the K31 has more bottom end. You can adjust this to have more top end, um, just it all comes down to the wastegate, but the 171702 does have more top end. The gasket for the intake side here, um, on mine, the O-ring was split, so what I did was I used uh, the same O-ring, and I used the right stuff silicone all around here and let it sit overnight before I started the truck but this is good stuff I've seen people use this on uh, other things and it can easily handle like 50 psi no problem and another thing the easiest way to get this turbo in after you have your studs mounted is to push the exhaust pipe back pretty far because if you don't press it far enough you're, you're gonna have a really time hard time uh, lining this up here so this can be uh, hard to push back, but if you take a pry bar and pry it off the manifold and push that way, you can actually get it to push back. Sometimes you can spray the flex pipe with WD-40, and that actually makes it a lot easier as well. And I want to go back here. Before putting on the brass fitting and the oil pressure line, fill the turbo up with motor oil and gently, very gently with your hands, spin the turbine around and make sure the oil is topped off. This is something you want to do after it's mounted up to the manifold and before you put this on. So then put it on when you finally go to start the truck. I like to crank it over a few times and turn it off actually before it starts. So I'm trying to build up oil pressure in this line here and I might do that twice. After I do that, then I will start the truck and the turbo will spool up. So I feel like it's a good safe preventative measure to take in case this line was like completely dry or something and the turbo goes to spool up before there's enough oil pressure in the line. So that is uh, what I like to do. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. I definitely have more videos coming your way. Thanks guys. This is Slim Diesel.